Welcome to the session of uh, animal physiology. So today we will be discussing about the digestion in stomach. So first of all, have a look at the digestive system in case of a human. So we can see there that digestive system start from this uh, the mouth. For mouth, uh, the food goes to oesophagus. From oesophagus, it reaches the stomach, and finally from the stomach, it to the small intestine. From small intestine, it goes to the large intestine, and finally to the anus. So, out of these organs, today we will be discussing that how the digestion is going to occur in case of stomach. Now, this is the structure of a stomach. So, we can see there that a stomach can be easily divided into three parts: the upper part, what we call the fundus; the middle part, that is a uh, body; and the lower part that is a pylorus or antrum so we can see there that uh, this is the oesophagus the food actually enter through here so here also we are going to have a esophagus sphincter which is going to control the entry of food in the stomach and from stomach the food goes outside to duodenum so here again we have a, a pyloric sphincter that is going to control the Uh, outflow of food from the stomach to the duodenum uh, let's have a look at the histology of the alimentary canal or more or less in the entire alimentary canal the uh, histology remains the same including the stomach so we can see there that uh, here the outermost layer is actually called a serosa that is a protective layering now below the serosa there is a muscle layer even the muscle layer can be divided into the upper circular one and the lower the longitudinal muscle so the very role of the longitudinal muscle is that it helps in the contraction of the organ so it plays a very very critical role in the process of digestion finally there is a two layer what we call submucosa and the mucosa most of the digestive glands are actually present in the mucosa as far as the stomach is concerned the entire glands or hormones that is going to be secreted which participate a very important role in the process of digestion in case of a stomach all are present exclusively in case of mucosa have a look at uh, the major glands that is present in case of a stomach to present we can divide the major gland into two parts one what we call a uh, gastric or oxygenatic gland This gastric and oxygenatic gland is a source for the secretion of hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen, gastric intrinsic factor, and mucus. Similarly, there is a pyloric gland, so that is also responsible for the secretion of mucus. Very small amount of pepsinogen, gastrin, and some other hormones. So, how these cells are actually involved in the secretion of uh, these hormones and enzymes so in order to understand this let's have a look at the structure of a gastric pit now this is the structure of a gastric pit so first of first of all let's have a look at what are the different parts which constitute the gastric pit so this is the gastric pit so this entire region is actually a gastric pit just gastric pit continues with a this area now this area is actually known for the secretion of the mucus so the cell which secretes mucus is actually called as a goblet cells now below the mucus there is a oxygenatic or parietal cells so these are the main source for the secretion of hydrochloric acids and gif so just below the oxygenatic or parietal cells we have a chief cell or zymogen so that is primarily responsible for the formation of enzymes uh, mainly in the form of pepsinogen you know pepsinogen is a inactive and why it is inactive because pepsinogen is primarily responsible for the digestion of protein the digestion of protein so if the pepsin is going to present in active form in this particular area then it can digest the gastric wall itself so that's why actually it is present in the form of inactive form that is pepsinogen so you can see there this pepsinogen when moves to 
the oxygenetic cell operatic or parietal cells they come in contact with the hydrochloric acids and in the process they activate it and then the pepsin flows over the mucus and finally reaches the stomach area for the process of digestion now below the gymogen cell we have a enteroendocrine cells so this area marks the enteroendocrine cells and that is responsible for the secretion of large number of hormones primarily gastrin histamine serotonin very small amounts of cholecystokinin as well but primarily cholecystokinin is going to be secreted by duodenum and somatostatin so that is going to play an inhibitory role so if we enlarge this particular structure we can see there that uh, this is a parietal cells now this is a chief or zymogen cells so as we can see the chief and zymogen cells are responsible for the secretion of pepsinogen the moment they move forward they get in contact with the hcl and in the process they form pepsin so once the pepsin is formed so further conversion of pepsinogen into pepsin is going to be carried over, carried out lower most as i told you that it is a enteroendocrine cells uh, which is primarily responsible for the formation of large number of hormones which is involved in the gastric digestion these are the important gastric juice later on we will see that how they play a very important role so gastrin is a hormone that is going to be secreted by the g cells and they stimulates ecl and parietal cells for the secretion of hydrochloric acids as far as serotonin is concerned they are responsible for the contraction of the stomach muscles renin it is present only in the infant uh, for the digestion of the milk protein so as the individual grows older so no longer it is required so it is not secreted pepsinogen that is the most important one pepsinogen when it comes in contact with the hydrochloric acid gets converted into active pepsin and that is primarily responsible for protein digestion there is a gastric intrinsic factor so that is also going to be secreted by the parietal cells and they play a very very prominent role in the absorption of vitamin b12 mucus which is made up of primarily bicarbonate they are secreted by goblet cells and their prime role is to protect and lubricate stomach now histamine histamine is a hormone and their prime role is to stimulate the parietal cells for the secretion of hydrochloric acids there is a one more hormone that is ghrelin so this hormone is a, is a secreted only when we feel hungry so this give message to the brain and through which the uh, neurotransmitters in the form of acetylcholine is secreted which also going to excites the parietal cells for the secretion of hydrochloric acids so these are the main gastric juice we will see how these gastric juice are involved in the process of gastric digestion so let's have a look at the main function of the stomach so the stomach mixes the food with the gastric juice which consists of primarily hydrochloric acid pepsinogen and the gastrin after the digestion what happens it liquefies into chyme at the same time it is going to retain food for a reasonable period of time so that enzymes act on it the prime role for the stomach is the digestion of the protein but at the same time it also performs uh, some absorptive function uh, particularly for salts and alcohol and it also produces gif which as i told you earlier that helps in the absorption of vitamin b12 now have a look at the gastric digestion it primarily consists of three different stages the very first stage what we call cephalic phase now cephalic phase is marked by the activation of the parietal cells for the secretion of hcl hydrochloric acids now this activation of parietal cell is actually done by a uh, three different source one is a uh, acetylcholine second is a uh, gastrin and third is a uh, histamine at the same time there is also a secretion of somatostatin which actually marks the inhibition of these three stimulus so that the further secretion of hydrochloric acid can be checked 
The second phase is the gastric phase. Now, in case of gastric phase, majority of the gastric hormones and enzymes are going to be secreted. And finally, in case of intestinal phase, the chyme about to enter into the duodenum and that is marked by the activation of the enterogastron. The sequence of events for the gastric digestion could be outlined like that uh, whenever the food from oesophagus enters into stomach, so the protein containing food is going to stimulate the secretion of gastric from the pyloric gland. Now once gastrin is secreted, what they do? They activate for the secretion of hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen as well as the mucus. Now, the production of gastric acid in a stomach is highly a regulated process which is under control of both positive as well as the negative feedback. Altogether, four types of cells are involved in the process. These includes parietal cells, the G cells, B cells and enterochromaffin-like cells. With the interaction of all these four cells, the flow of hydrochloric acid in the stomach is, is actually regulated. Now, pepsogen in in, in acidic median forms pepsin and eventually pepsin digests the proteins and forms polypeptides. At the same time, there is a small quantities of other gastric juice is also secreted which includes gastric lipase, gastric amylase and gelatinase. Let's learn that how the acid secretion is going to be regulated within the stomach. Now there are three regulated molecules. One the acetylcholine, two, the histamine, and third, the gastrin. The acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter and that is going to be released by the enteric neurons. So as we can see in the diagram, this enteric neur neurons secrete acetylcholine, which is going to excite the parietal cells for the secretion of hydrochloric acid. The second is histamine, that is a paracrine, and it is released from enterochromaffin-like cells. Now, gastrin is a hormone that is going to be released by G-cell and it activates enterochromaffin for the secretion of the histamine. At the same time, the gastrin can also directly stimulate the parietal cell for the secretion of hydrochloric acids. Now, all these are the positive feedback. But at the same time, there is a negative feedback also because suppose if there is a no food in the stomach, then naturally the secretion of hydrochloric acid is not required. So, in that case, the inhibitory action is carried out by uh, the hormone called somatostatin, right? So this somatostatin simultaneously it controls the G cell, the enterochromaffin cells as well as the parietal cells. So with the secretion of somatostatin, what happens? The secretion of SCL is inhibited. So this is how the acid secretion within the stomach is regulated. So there are some uh, specific uh, diseases that occurs in case of a stomachs as far as the ulcer are concerned it is an irritation of the gastric mucosa uh, through which gastric juice actually corrodes the stomach wall and eventually it causes the ulcer as we can see in the diagram so with the over activity of the enzymes what happens the wall get corroded and this is popularly as called as a peptic ulcer or we call them PUD that is peptic ulcer disease and finally there is a few questions for you you need to tell me what is a chlorohydria and uh, this leads to perinesis anemia so you need to tell how and secondly if you're feeling hungry so tell me which hormone is secreted signaling the hunger send your response to info at the rate of and uh, if you get this answer correct we will send you a free video lessons so this is all about the digestion in the stomach hope uh, the brief session of digestion in the stomach has make you understand the entire process of digestion in case of any queries or any doubts feel free to write at info at the rate of thank you